Hey, what is going on guys? Dana from ModBot here, and in today's video, we are going to be looking at this guy right here, um, Old Faithful, or the old Fulgurtech 2020. Um, this is one of the first 3D printers I ever owned, uh, minus the DaVinci 1.0, which I got probably a year to year and a half before um, picking up this kit printer. Uh, I built this back in, I think it was whew, February or March of 2016. So this is the oldest printer that I still have around as far as me not selling it or getting rid of it or stripping it down or something like that. Um, it has been a beast. As you can see, it looks terrible. It's covered in dust. There's like dog hair. It has been sitting in my shelf um, unused for some months now. But uh, other than that, it has been is probably a thousand or two thousand hours on this printer. It was my primary printer that I used for uh, quite a few years. And I thought it would be fun. Um, I know that I do a lot of reviews and things like that, but that's usually after using a printer for a month or so. But this is a printer that, again, I used for about two years. And this was a kit printer, so it was a do-it-yourself. I got it at the time for a little under $300 on eBay, um, which was a really good deal because all of the kit printers or any printers in that range at that time were completely acrylic. So to find something around $300 or under $300 that had an aluminum extrusion frame was pretty, uh, pretty impressive and pretty amazing. So again, just a brief overhaul of it. Um, it's definitely got some upgrades, but these are all upgrades I did right when I built it because I was super gun ho on upgrading it, like Xbox 360 power supply, upgraded cooling, additional Z height due to these things. I added an LCD screen to it. Um, I added, I feel like I've added more things to it. Oh yeah, LEDs on and off switch right here. Um, but this thing printed without any problems for a good part of those two and a half years or whatever that I had it. The only issues that I ever had was um, I had a I had a, a heater cartridge go out after about a year and a half, which wasn't a big deal. Um, I also had a faulty thermistor uh, after about same time, about a year and a half or so, give or take. Um, I did run into some issues with the bed. I'm not sure if it was the thermistor or if it was the bed that went bad or the connection on this old, old Rams Arduino board that held up for so long, but I kept getting thermal runway errors and I didn't have my, um, I didn't have my original firmware for this that I had used, which I think was Repetier. It might've been Marlin, but I'm pretty sure it was Repetier. So it's been printing without a heated bed for probably the last year of me owning it. So I had a heated bed for the first year and a half. So it's been a PLA exclusive uh, machine. I was able to do a little bit of TPU on it, um, but I recently just threw on this E3D um, direct drive. It had kind of like a uh, MakerBot style hot end uh, extruder setup on it. And this has been pretty much my only direct drive for the majority of my 3D printing um, time, I guess, if you will. And it's been fun because it's been my go-to for any time I need to print TPUs or any kind of flexible. And it did a pretty damn good job of it. I did a lot of buttons for like the Pi Girl Game Boy uh, emulator device. But for those of you that don't know, I'm also in the process of moving. I've got 20 days left here um, where I've been living with my best friend, his wife, my godson, and his daughter for the last two years. And I'm, I signed a lease uh, on an apartment much closer to work where me and my girlfriend are moving in together. So I'm super excited, but it's kind of bittersweet in certain ways. I had to downsize. I got rid of most of my 3D printers. Um, the Ender 3 is my primary workhorse and the AlphaWise U20 I'm messing with still. Um, I'm sure I'll get more printers when I'm over there. I just, for the sake of not having to move quite as many crazy big machines. Um, it just kind of made more sense. But it was kind of bittersweet because I was trying to decide what I wanted to do with this. Like part of me wants to s just scrap it or get rid of it or, you know, whatever, because it, it needs, probably right now I'd say it needs a new main board, it needs a new heated bed, and some of the stuff's just dated on it. It's still using uh, threaded rods instead of lead screws. The bearings and stuff are so jacked up on it. Like it needs a lot to get it back up and going, but I kind of have a soft spot for it just because this is the printer that taught me so much. Like it wasn't the DaVinci 1.0, um, the DaVinci 1.0 was my first printer and it was enough to get me intrigued. But this being my first kit, I put, I think it was a 12 hour build. I still have the stream uploaded. I nearly killed myself by um, crossing wires from the mains board, um, which is still able to be found on my YouTube channel. But this printer has been absolutely insane. Um, the the Fulgur Tech printer was just amazing. 
definitely was an easy build, very time consuming. Um, I've had my eyes on their FT5 for a really, really long time, but seriously, everything else on this is still the way I left it. I haven't had to do anything with any of the belts. I haven't had to, I mean, power supplies there. I had a little bit of this end stop is kind of loose. So um, it basically just now is pushed off to the side. So it hits it like that. Um, the Z also is pretty loose, so it, it sometimes gets pushed down, so I had to mess with the bed leveling a bit, but honestly, all in all, this thing has held up extremely well. I think that for the time, this was an incredible machine, and I still don't think it's very bad. I mean, again, for that $300 price range, you have things like the Creality, uh, like CR10 Mini or the Ender 3, so it's kind of hard for me to recommend this kit, but this was truly a full kit while the Creality machines are either already ready to rock and roll minus four screws or you've got like the Ender 3 which is you know 45 minutes setup maybe but this was the machine again that taught me just about everything I know about 3D printing was through trial and error on this guy um, and it's been one hell of a beast. So yeah, I just wanted to show you guys because I don't know if we're ever gonna see this machine again. I, like I said, have no idea what I'm doing with it, but I felt like with how much it's done, it feels like the Y end stop is even broken on it. But with how much it's been through and how much it's done for me, I felt like it deserved kind of a tribute. So, you know, potentially a moment of silence for the Fulgur Tech 2020. But regardless, I am very happy with what this machine has been able to do for me. This 3D printer has been so awesome and so abused and so just neglected with the, you know, it just looks so rough. So again, guys, this is the Fulgur Tech 2020 with its original ramps and Arduino board. And um, who knows if we'll ever see it again. So for now, we will say farewell and um, maybe it'll be Maybe I'll reconstruct everything on it and just keep the aluminum frame, but I don't know. It seems like a lot of work with, with the, you know, cost of how much you can get a quality machine again. So, so I hope you guys are doing awesome and I look forward to seeing you guys in my next video. Lots of fun stuff. Um, we're getting closer to having a new recording area, which um, will be definitely compact, but it'll be nice to not have all this stuff in my bedroom. I'm very much so looking forward to that. So on that note, guys, I will see you in the next video. Thank you so much for watching. Peace.